April 2013, the Hempel family finally has permission to perform the surgery they hope will save their twin daughters. Hi, I got your doggy. Look. <laughs> I'm shaving the hair just around the incision, so um, it will be fairly noticeable. They have nice, thick hair. And then, um, just because I guess I forgot to witness, I think it's going to hit me like once they're really ready to go in. Are you being a good girl? Yeah. Okay, Addie, I'll see you when you come out. I mean, we're really hopeful. It's going to be different. Oh. So how long have you been waiting for this day? Oh, gosh, years now. I just can't even believe I, it. And how are you feeling? Just overwhelmed, really. I mean, I'm just, it's, I mean, some of these tears, I'm, I'm a little scared, but it's a lot of tears of joy, too, that, you know, we're finally going to get, like, a permanent solution. Now, it's in the hands of Dr. Peter's son implanting a small pump to deliver cyclodextrin straight to the brains of Addie and Cassie. It might be a new lease on life. It's also brain surgery with inherent risk and no guarantee of what it might do. So we're in the operating room with uh, Cassie now and uh, they just put in this reservoir. This is the thing that they've been waiting for for years and it's officially in the operation. Uh, is just being performed right now, but that reservoir through which they're going to put this medication, that's done. It's been a long road. It's been a very long road. It's hard to even remember the beginning. D the operation, did it go just as you planned? Operation went perfectly. No problems. No. All was well. Yay! But the feeling Hi. didn't last. Chris, what happened? Oh, geez. Um... So after the operation, um, everything was going smoothly. We ended up getting the girls home, and it was kind of midday, and all of a sudden Cassie started vomiting. And At first they thought it was an infection, but as Cassie got worse... They sent us over to the hospital, and they did a scan, and they could see that she had a massive brain bleed. It was just, it was awful. The helicopter, you know, takes off. You know, we're in tears, in shock. Um, hop in the car and we just started, you know, racing the hundred miles an hour, you know, down to Oakland. So it does make you um, do some soul searching about, you know, was that the right decision? I, I can say for sure that I wouldn't have made it, I wouldn't even today make a different decision. Another operation saved Cassie's life, but even now she's still paralyzed on her left side. Her sister Addie has done better. Hugh, how are the girls doing? I would go out on a limb and say they're doing even better than they were two years ago. They look bright today. Right. When they yeah, them. it's a, a brightness, and, and that's before in their eyes, you just couldn't see that. And for us, it's eye contact. Um, our kids would always look around us. They'd never really look at us. They'd be all over the place. And it's like now they hold the gaze. Here comes our grandpa. You know, after two injections into their spine of the cyclodextrin, the twins were almost deaf, and their hearing went almost back to normal. And that's unheard of from a progressive neurological disease. That just doesn't happen. And you can see that it actually says, you know, new drug. Over the last four years that I've been following the Hempel family, I've seen it over and over. Find a solution. Try it. Make it more widely available. They even help set up a business to market cyclodextrin. What are you going to choose, Cassie? The Hempels do have another dream. It's that someday, somehow, they will find a way to talk with the girls. Goldfish. <gasps> Would you goldfish. like to have some goldfish? Good choice. We like goldfish. This just might be a step in that direction. And since the girls can't talk, they could just use their eyes. So they stare into the screen, and there's a, this technology is able to pick up where their eyes are looking. And so once they focus in on a picture, it kind of makes that selection. So you think about it like a click of a mouse. What I really want to get to is where they can tell us what they're feeling and, and where they're hurting. Because right now we have no way of knowing. And so when she starts bawling, it's, it's really, really... Uh, uh, scary and, and, and daunting because we don't know what to do. I mean, it's like, how do you know what to do? But I also know, 
for all they've accomplished, getting to this point isn't enough. And so the Hempels are asking, what's next? One path they've settled on is deeply controversial, medical marijuana. Almost done. Chris and Hugh say cannabis oil has cut down the number of seizures that the girls suffer. Done. Good job. And as with most families I've met, the Hempels use a strain without THC, the chemical that gets you high. Just recently, they were awarded licenses to grow, process, and sell medical marijuana in the state of Nevada. Wow, there you go. This is <laughs> it, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a little overwhelming. Check out this planned growing site. We're in the cannabis business in order to have medicine for our children first and foremost. But what we quickly discovered is that there's another hundred families who either can't get or can't afford the medicine. Here we go. Whoa. Whoa. When your kids have been near death for almost a decade, well, it's impossible to describe what that does to the parents, to Chris and to Hugh. Good job. But they know the work they've done has also paved the way for children all over the world. Brazil, the Netherlands, Spain, Japan. In so many countries, parents are infusing their children with cyclodextrin. No small thanks to this mom and dad. We really could have the first drug in history that stopped a progressive neurological disease in animals. And so we don't know how that's going to play out in the patients. But, I mean, when you think about that, I mean, there's just nothing for Alzheimer's, ALS, Parkinson's, and there's been millions of dollars poured into these diseases. And yet here we are sitting on, you know, a sugar compound that's essentially non-toxic, that's in Febreze, and, like, it's going into children's brains now and could be the lifesaver that we're looking for. In 2012, the National Institutes of Health launched a trial of cyclodextrin in children with Neiman Pick, very similar to what the Hempels tried. So far now, the safety looks good enough that they are planning for a bigger study. You know, I'm always struck by what a few committed people can do to change the world. In this case, a parent's determination to help a loved one. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. That does it for Vital Signs.